Industry-leading migration service, Elements Fly, powered by Avpoint, is available a few different ways. One, you could download the tool and run it on your local network, which is great for on-prem to on-prem and on-prem to cloud migrations. If you're doing a cloud to cloud migration, or you're doing an on-prem to cloud migration, but don't want to install it locally, Fly is now available through a VM in the Azure Marketplace. To create the VM, visit the Azure Marketplace, click in the search box up at the top and type in Fly. From the list of suggestions, we click on Office 365 migration with Fly. Please note, in order to create a VM, you must have an active Azure account. If you do not have an active Azure account tied to the user you are logged in with, it will prompt you to create a free Azure account before allowing you to create the VM. On the Fly Migration page, over on the left, click Get It Now. In the box that opens, click Continue. On the Office 365 Migration with Fly page, up at the top you have two choices, Create and Start with a Preset Configuration. Create will take you directly into the properties that you need to configure to create the VM. Start with a Preset Configuration will ask you about the performance that you're looking for. The difference between these two is that it may suggest a different VM setup as far as number of cores and amount of RAM if you go with Start a Preset Configuration. If you're fine selecting the VM by its size directly, then we click Create. Note that either option will allow you to change the VM size if necessary. When we come to Create a Virtual Machine, you can see there are several tabs across the top. The only one that you must pay attention to is what's on Basics, because it will require you to fill in some of the fields. You have optional choices on the others, but you do not have to visit those in order to be able to deploy the VM. If we scroll down, first thing I will see is my Azure subscription, and then it will ask me for a resource group. Note that there are information buttons here to explain what these different options are if you're not familiar with them. I have one resource group previously configured, which I've named Fly VMs. And if I scroll down, I now have to give the virtual machine a name. Pick the region where you want to deploy the VM Please note that not all VM sizes and images may be available across all regions. That depends on your subscription. Scrolling down a little bit, we can see that it has selected the AP Elements Fly 4.4 for us. And a little further down, four cores with eight gigs. And this is going to be the price per month. Now, if you'd like to change that size, you can click Change Size. And here you'll be presented with a lot of different options, including the number of CPUs, the amount of RAM, and then once it loads, the costs out to the far right. We recommend no less than two cores with eight gigs of RAM, but actually recommend four cores with 16 gigs of RAM if possible. You can add filters up at the top that will allow you to dictate exactly what you're looking for. And then once you've located what you want, you just click on it. Note, some things may be grayed out. This is a symptom of what I was describing earlier. Based on your subscription, you may not have access to certain VMs. So I locate the one that I want, click on it, and click Select. Below that, we have to put in a username and password. These are the credentials for the local admin for that new VM. Now, as I mentioned earlier, back up at the top, there's information about the disks, which type of disk is being used, for instance. If you come over here and you see standard, but you want to select premium, you can get warnings, and this is based on the size. So back on the basics tab, the size that I had selected will dictate the type of disk that's available. One of the filters you can use back in that screen is for premium disks. So that will show you only ones that are available at that level. Networking gives you information about the virtual network that's going to be set up, and even the subnet. 
So if you are going to create multiple VMs and you wanted them to communicate with each other on the same network, please note that it is also possible to connect a VM in Azure to a local domain. This can be valuable, especially with things like exchange to exchange online migrations, where you need to really be in the local domain and connected for full functionality of what can be migrated. Microsoft has a great article that's called Tutorial, Join a Windows Server Virtual Machine to a Managed Domain. So you can see how to do that for those specific types of migrations. It's very thorough on what your prerequisites need to be and then the steps you need to go through to connect that Fly Virtual Machine to your local domain. Back on the Basics tab, everything that I need to create this VM is now in place. So down at the bottom, I click Review and Create. This is where Azure is going to go through and verify everything that you entered as being accurate. It's going to check against your subscription to make sure that you are able to create this, that you've not run up against quotas for cores as an example. And as long as you see validation passed up at the top, you are ready to create the VM. So down at the bottom, I'm going to click Create. and it tells me that it is initializing the deployment of my VM. And now it takes us over and tells us the deployment is underway. While that's going on, please note that you can also find the Fly VM by going directly into Microsoft Azure, going to the home page, and up at the top, clicking Virtual Machines. In Virtual Machines, I can click Add, and that brings us back to the same page we were before, but you'll notice it doesn't fill in any of the information about Fly for me. In order to find the Fly VM, you would go to Browse All Public and Private Images and search again for Fly. Once I click on that, it's just filling in all the rest of the information again, picking the resource group, giving it a name, choosing a size if different, populating the username and password. So we have a few different ways that we can actually access that VM. Again, we can see the deployment is still underway. Once it is finished though, I would be able to go back to my home tab, again into virtual machines, and then access my VM running fly directly from there. Thank you for watching this short video on finding and adding a Fly virtual machine through the marketplace.